All right, guys, gals, and everything in between. Another episode of Ash vs. Evil Dead has aired, and I was so happy to watch it because this is the episode we've been waiting for on the farm. Not sure what the episode is titled, but, you know, I'll put it in the, in the main title thingy. We open up, and we think maybe the girl's gonna be tied up, but no, she plays it off and makes it seem like Ash is the demon, where he was strangling her, he was crazed, he's Ash, you know, he probably does a lot of drugs, and he's a little bit crazy and old and senile, so he's clearly the demon, so they're like, all right, let's do an exorcism on him and it'll be great. No, well, you see Ash, and actually, one of the funniest things is Ash became the most profane character on television by being bound up. You can't fully hear what he has to say, but if you really listen, he says some really funny stuff. As they're talking about, oh, we might need to use, like, the blood ritual and all this stuff, and Ash is just kind of like... <laughs> it's, it's great, it's humorous, but one thing I really love about this episode is it kind of harkens to that grittier remake of Evil Dead that I did my review of back in the day. This movie's fucking disgusting. You know, it's like that moment when your friend is doing something really disgusting and everyone is just kind of like, ah, shit. When there's about 10,000 gallons of blood on the screen at one given point in time, you can't help but have a little bit of like, oh, that's cool, that's really cool. That, that kind of harkens back, but more like how it would be done if Sam Raimi directs it, which is why I like this episode so much. A lot of people think Sam Raimi is directing every episode of this, uh, this show, and he's not, because that would be insane. Going on with this episode, uh, since she's not really possessed, like, Pablo has to go grab everything, and he's all mad, and he's like, what is she doing? We see Kelly trying to seduce Pablo, and we're, and actually, guys, gals, and everything in between, this is one of the most tense segments of the show because it does that thing that I call the die hard moment where the bad guy is there and like the good guy and they don't necessarily know. I mean, the bad guy knows in this case and the demon is trying to seduce Pablo for some reason. We're not quite sure why. And then all of a sudden Pablo's kind of being drawn into it they're being a little too obvious, so you know there's something there, and it's bugging you, and it's tense. That is called perfect tension building, people. Like, this, the tension in this episode was built perfectly, because they're indulging in adult narcotics that in some places are legal. It's in a shotgun, like a double-barreled shotgun, and you're like, whoa! Ooh. Bleh. I took firearm safety courses, and no. The tension is building because then all of a sudden it's like, why don't you come over here and light up with me kind of thing, you know? Peer pressure. Pablo's kind of like, okay, yeah, and she's, you know, she's showing off a bit. She's making herself look hot. Well, the demon is making it look hot. And then all of a sudden Pablo is just slowly getting drawn into it. And you're like, no, Pablo. And I'm gripping onto my TV and I'm yelling at the TV like, Pablo, don't do it. And then you see the tension, the, the big tension thing in this scene, which is fantastic, which is there's a shotgun shell in her, like, boot, and you see the, the edge of it, and you're like, <laughs> you're freaking out, and it's crazy, and it's awesome, and then all of the sudden, uh, she puts it in the, in the chamber while Pablo's kind of distracted, because Pablo has his moments of being a bumbling idiot, let's be real here. You're, you're waiting for him, she's like, just take a hit. And so and Pablo's like, no, 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 no. And you're like, come on, Pablo, just run. Just run. She's not worth it. Bros before hoes kind of thing, you know? Boom, boom. Well, I've always wanted to kiss your forehead, and I was kind of like... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's unique, I'll give it that. I never expected to hear I've always wanted to kiss your forehead in television. But, you know, maybe that's because I'm desensitized for from watching shows like Game of Thrones and things like that, that kissing the forehead seems rather different. In the end, then he turns and they do that classic camera cut where he like looks over here and then the frame rotates and I'm a sucker for those shots and she's like, just like that. And then, bam! And then, then 
Ash finally bites loose of the the noose thing and is like, no, it's it's not really me, it's Kelly. And then bam, they hear it, they run in there, and they apprehend Kelly. Now this is where it harkens back to that Evil Dead remake. I just want people to know there are two people right here who are waiting to see the movie. Uh, and they're literally right next to me right now. And I don't want to spoil anything for them because otherwise uh, that one over there is going to probably try and throw a shoe at me and then tear my nipples off and use them as radio dials. That intro scene where they're trying to exercise this demon, although I like this one better because there's a demon inside of her, it's not just a standard deadite. This one is a full-on demon. Ash is in battle gear. Ash is ready to fight. And you can see that this is damaging on them, which has, to me anyway, said that the characters have grown a lot. And I really like that. The characters have grown a healthy amount. And they've grown to be a team, and they like each other. And and Brujo is kind of like, I, I don't know if this is even possible. Like, we might just need to kill her. Where, like, he's trying everything. He's trying chicken blood, and she's spitting teeth out at Ash, and... And it's just brutal, but at the same time they have some comedic stuff. But it wasn't overly brutal in that way that the remake did, which I was entertained by, but I know some people like my girlfriend who were not entertained by it. Like, it was too much gore. It was like, yeah, that's a bit over the top. Let's, let's tone it back a bit, people. This one did, and it was, it was not, I dare I say, done in good taste, but then he's like trying things like leeches and she just like vomits them back out. The vomit was over the top and I was okay with that because Evil Dead is known for having weird things like vomit just shoot out with a hose. So I saw that as an homage to the original Sam Raimi films. But I will tell you that it was done in good taste and I really liked it. And obviously if you're this far in the review, you've seen the episode. So you know that it's, it's in good taste. But as, as they're doing their thing, I like the way they have the demon looking on the people, how it's got like the fangs, so you can see elements of the actual demon inside her. And Pablo goes outside and is like, you know, I, I don't know what to do, but there's weakness. Like, I, I could have the demon go inside me. And I like that because it shows how much he really cares for Kelly, because we always hear that he, he has a crush on Kelly, and we know that, and, and I buy it, but now we see that he doesn't just have a crush on her, he cares about her. And that is called just character bonding. Like, I feel like I'm friends with all of these characters now, and it's doing it so well. Then he goes back in there and he's like, you know, take me instead. And she's just kind of like, no. And she starts to try and kill herself by smashing her head back against the wall. And it's brutal, but not done in an over-the-top way. So there's not like blood and like, just blood and brains like smashing into the back and so with all this she turns into Kelly and is like you know please kill me Ash like you know there's only one way out of this just kill me do it quick and so Ash raises his gun and you're like oh my god is Kelly gonna die I was honest to god like I was sitting on my tailbone and I'm pretty sure that was it I was just kind of like floating in the air and I was like oh my god Oh my god, like, gripping, like, is he gonna pull the trigger? Is he gonna pull, like, a, a MacGuffin where we think she's a main character and it turns out, boom, they killed her off a couple, like, half a season in? I have no idea. So I was, like, biting my nails. I had, I was like this. And I was, like, sitting on the edge of the couch. And then all of a sudden, boom the character breaks and reveals. And I was catching on to it, and I love when movies do this. They they can know when an audience is gonna get something. And that is when she says, just remember, please put a cross above my grave when I die. And then Ash pauses, and he lowers the gun, and he goes, Kelly's Jewish. And I was like, that's what I was thinking just as you lowered the gun, Ash. Oh, I love it when TV shows or movies do that. When they're, they're pacing the show with your brain thought process. So as you're processing it, the characters are. And it immerses you that much more because it makes you feel like that's the thing that you would have caught on to when you're in that moment. 
And I love that. And so then all of a sudden the demon pops out and is like, Worth of I love every element of that. So then as they're all doing their thing, uh, the, the demon, he's kind of taunting the demon to come out. So they're trying to get the demon to come out. And this is when it gets all like Ridley Scott's alien-esque where she's like having the demon like reach through her chest and pull and like grab Pablo and stuff. And I was like, oh, and, and then the, the demon starts crawling out of her mouth. And I thought that was a really unique choice. Like her mouth, like technically, like, that demon could never fit out of a human mouth. But then I realized, ah, but it's supernatural, so it's different. You also see that digital warp effect, like, this is, this is beyond our world's physics at this point. And Ash is like, okay, I got this. And, and you know what's interesting is when Ash is fighting normally, like, in this show, Ash is a little bit more of a comical character than he was in the other Evil Deads. I mean, yeah, they're hearkening to Army of Darkness because we all love Army of Darkness. Ash, at the same time, like, this one, he was treating it much more seriously. So it shows that Ash, in this fight, he feels like he can't win. And so he's like, okay, come on, Pablo. And so be careful. And the demon crawls out of the mouth and he's got the shotgun aimed and he's all set to go. And then like, boom, and he's taking it seriously. And then boom, punctured, uncle dies. And I, I was sitting there and I was like, oh my God, I did not expect the uncle to die, everyone. Like I seriously did not expect the uncle to die. I thought that he was an interesting character and probably a cameo, but I figured maybe he'd stay alive for a season two because they did announce this as a season two renewal. And then all of a sudden, boom, he's just dead. And it was actually like shocking to me. And then Ash remembers his trip and was like, don't think, just shoot. Only think sometimes or maybe never. Now, honestly, I could have used without the or maybe never thing. I felt like that was just them trying to be a little more comical and I didn't honestly need that. I felt like it didn't take away from it. It was just a little bit more than they needed. And so Ash throws up the gun in style to get the guy to disappear. And so as the demon is like reappearing, he slashes so then it teleports and he doesn't think about it. He just catches the gun and then it pops up right in his face and then boom, explosion, men in black, goop everywhere. I loved that. The battle was intense, but it showed at the same time he had to sort of outthink, but at the same time, because he didn't have to think about it, like nothing, he had to be more, he had to basically fight the boss without the strategy guide. Like he had to know and just guess and hope that this was right. And it was so clever and excellent that this demon, essentially, what I got from this, is the demon reads your mind. So if your mind is empty and you switch to controller port two when you're fighting Psycho Mantis, and then all of a sudden, boom, it doesn't guess it anymore. Bam, dead, because Ash can win. They do, as a closing, an honestly touching funeral. And one of the things that gets me on the emotional was where Ash, like, they're they're doing their funeral thing, and Ash just sort of pats on Kelly's back and is just like, come on, let let him have a moment, because Pablo was alone. I was like, that's that shows they understand each other, and I really was compelled by that. I thought it was great, I really liked it, and it, it definitely built these characters, and she's kind of, and in the end, like, what did I do? I hope I didn't hurt you guys. And they're not telling her, because does she really need to know? And I can see them bonding as characters, and I really liked it. And also, I didn't really touch on it much because there was really nothing to touch on. I thought they were going somewhere with it, and honestly, I felt like they didn't need it, is the cop and the lady from Evil Dead 2 are in a car hunting Ash with his hand, and his hand points towards the farm, which shows they're still just on the back trail. I honestly thought they were going to come in and help Ash fight this demon or rescue Ash, whatever it ended up being. And they ended up going nowhere with it. I know what's gonna happen. Next episode, they'll show up at the house and they'll be like, oh, something happened here. We're still on his tail. And I was hoping they'd go somewhere with it and they didn't. That's why I didn't really touch on it. All right, guys, gals, and everything in between, what did you think of this episode of Ash vs. Evil Dead? Did you think it was compelling? Also, I do have some reviews coming to you. I want to do Creed and Victor Frankenstein at least, but you know, it's Thanksgiving weekend, and they released on Thanksgiving weekend, and 
you know, I have Thanksgiving things to do, uh, but that's why. But they're coming, I promise. They are going to be here. So, what did you guys think? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Got plenty more videos coming to you.